I love past lives. Past Lives, so far this year, is my favorite movie. I will continue to campaign for this film to be nominated in every possible Oscar category. What Celine Song does in this film is extraordinary. Because, a lot, first of all, she wrote this film and she directed it. Her vision for what she wrote is so beautiful. I love this film and I love the screenplay just as much. This is a fantastic film. I admonish you, if it is playing in your city, please see this. If it's playing in a state next to yours, go see this film. This film is so good. So Greta Lee was in the most recent uh, season of The Morning Show. So, last season of The Morning Show, and then Tao Yu was in Decision to Leave. These actors deserve Oscar nominations for what they do here. A lot of the performance is physical and or emotional, really. It's not only in what is said, how they deliver their lines, it's also in the body language and the acting they do without speaking. This film touched me so deeply. I love this film. So, Past Lives is about these two childhood friends whose soul connect, who connect on such a soulful and emotional level despite the gulf between them. So, they first, well, they're childhood friends. And the last time they saw each other was when they were 12 years old. But the connection they have spanned their entire lives. Here's the thing. And what I'm going to say does not spoil this film. This is, these aren't spoilers. But I do have to set the tone of the movie so that you understand how great and impactful it is. If you've ever considered what if, this will resonate with you. So Nora, her name is changed because she, her, she and her family are immigrating to Canada from Korea. She leaves behind her best friend. Now, as 12 year olds do, she says, I'm gonna marry him one day. She knows this at 12 years old, but she's 12 years old. You know how it is when we're 12. So. She says, I'm going to, her par their parents realize that they really have a, a great, a deep connection, that they love each other, but they don't know how to put this into words. And so their parents decide, well, let's take them on a date. Nora's parents are like, I want her, when she grows up, I want her to remember these important uh, these important moments in her childhood. I want her childhood to be memorable, especially in Korea. And so their parents take them on this play date and they have a lot. We hear the parents more than we hear the kids on this date. Again, she wants Nora to remember these moments so that she has not just a connection to him. His name is Hae Sung but also a connection to Korea. Okay, so they have this wonderful date, this memorable date, and then, you know, a couple of days later, Nora and her family immigrate to Canada. The last time they see each other, Sung says bye with so much finality. Even the kids in this film are fantastic. With so much finality, he says bye. We know that he is crushed and he believes he'll never see her again. And then we jump to 12 years. 12 years later, uh, he's studying to be an engineer. She is studying to be a playwright. So she and her mom are on the phone. She has now moved to New York where she's studying to be a playwright. And she and her mom, mom's in Canada, they're talking. And they've been like stalking old friends on Facebook. And then Nora says, wait, what was that little boy that I had that one date with? And, you know, she remembers that it was Hae Sung. And so she finds him on Facebook 
and then realizes that for 12 years or for a long time, he's been looking for her. But he's been looking for her under her career name. He didn't realize that she had changed her name. So he's been looking for her and she realizes that. And so she reaches out to him on, on uh, you know, sends him a message on Facebook. So they reconnect over Skype and they catch up with what was going on with their lives. But this connection, remember, there are thousands of miles between them and they don't even want to get off the phone. You remember those days where you don't even want to get off because there's just something there. Well, he plans to come to New York, but it's going to, to visit her, but it's going to take three years. And she's planning to go to Korea to meet him, but that's going to take a year. So she realizes that long distance just is not going to work for this relationship. And then, you know, she's Korean American now. She's been somewhat Americanized. So she decides to, you know, take a break take some time away from him because she's growing too close to him and knows that it's just not going to work. Long distance isn't going to work for her. She's studying to be a playwright and she gets this grant where she can study in Montauk. Uh, you know, she has like this writing residency really in Montauk. She meets this writer named Arthur, this student named Arthur, and they have a connection. This one night they meet she explains to him that when you meet someone like that they must have met in a prior life and that's why they're meeting again to complete what happened what they didn't complete in the prior life that this is destiny and so they grow together they date and eventually marry we realize that author played by john magaro loves her and we come to realize that Perhaps she has two soulmates in this lifetime. So they're living the typical relationship. There's love there, but something's missing in her. There's a piece missing in her, and we realize that it is Haesung. Now, another 12 years passed. Haesung has all this time been laboring he loves her so much and he still has wanted to reach out to her and she has also wanted to reach out to him but he ignored her he broke she broke his heart so 12 years pass this time he is visiting new york he's finally going to visit new york now this build up is so strong we realize this connection that's how great these performances are this connection is deep so deep that even we the audience i felt this so that when they meet he visits new york he visits her in new york this meeting will make you cry there's this magnetism between them remember they live four thousand or they live thousands of miles away from each other when they first meet all of that build up tension that intimacy is so strong and even they, when they first see each other, and they haven't seen each other for 20 plus years, they still don't know what to do. So there is this, this gulf between them, even in their physical presence. And then they embrace. And there, all of these emotions will just overflow, overtake you. You're like just tears. When you realize like that they are soulmates they embrace they spend the day together he's a tourist so they spend the day together they're catching up we realize that he has a girlfriend but he took a break because well he tells her one thing but we realize that he took a break because he can't marry someone that he doesn't have this particular deep connection with so they took a break but remember Nora is married to this Jewish man okay so they they catch up spend the day together and when when they he goes back to his hotel and she goes back home she tells 
her husband, how her day went, and how the fact that they are Korean and spent their childhood together, they have a connection, she and Sung, the way she will never have with Arthur. She will never feel the deepest connection, that rooted connection that she has with him. And all of this Koreanness he's wrapped in that they will never have that connection and now before Arthur had no jealousy in him but now he realizes he could never be him and that she will never love him Arthur love him the way she loves Hey Sung. a lot of this is on the page and the way these actors deliver it is so powerful that's why I love this film this film is so perfect in a way, to me, the way An Affair to Remember is a perfect romance film. That's how perfect this is to me. A lot of what is delivered by these actors is unspoken. It's so powerful. There's so much chemistry there that it just, it, it makes you it makes you feel like you are also in these characters' shoes because you had to have thought in your lifetime, what if? If one moment in your life changed, what would the trajectory be? So later, the next night, well, the next day rather, they spend the day together and then he, she introduces Hey Sung to Arthur and they go out for drinks. They go out for dinner and they go out for drinks. And in this moment where Hey Sung and Nora are speaking in Korean, there's this connection here where Arthur feels left out and he knows he will she will never have these this connection with him. But then he come Hey Sung comes to realize in this moment that in this lifetime he can't be with Nora, that she in this lifetime is someone who leaves him but doesn't leave Arthur. And then later that night when it's time for Hae Sung to go back to his hotel because he has a flight in the morning and he calls an Uber and they wait this good four or five minutes where they go back to the beginning where it's that final goodbye. Listen. This is a good movie. This is a good movie. This is going to touch you in a way. It touched me in a way that no other film this year has touched me. I really hope that this film is nominated for Best Picture. It is that impactful. I think... I think Celine Song's vision for this film is brilliant. I want her to be nominated for Best Director, Best Original Screenplay, and this film has a lot of silence. Creatively, I think it was so intentional. There are these points in the film where the silence speaks volumes, and I love how Celine song let those silent moments breathe there's white noise in the background but it's really silent because a lot of connections that you would have with your soulmate or someone you love is spoken in silence and she lets those moments in this screen um, in this film breathe I love that she did that and kudos to the actors I expect these actors to be nominated in every possible performance category because they take those moments of silence they take those moments and maximize them in a way that hasn't been delivered this year as far as what I've seen best performances of the year hands down so far and the score the score, there are some jazz pieces that blew me away. It blew me away. The score is masterful in this film. Every piece pairs perfectly with the scene. This is a good film. This is my 
favorite film of the year, I hold An Affair to Remember in high regard as one of the greatest classics of all time. And this reminded me on a deep level a lot of An Affair to Remember because there's so much that isn't spoken in An Affair to Remember and that's what this film does in, on a really deep level. If this is in limited release, I understand that this film is going to be difficult to find in the theater because it is in limited release. But if it is playing in a theater near you, I admonish you, please see this film. This is going to bless you in a way that no other film, for me, no other film has blessed me this year the way Past Lives has. If it is playing in a, in a theater near you, please support this film. It's going to bless you.